Okay, so this is what you see when you walk in to my studio. We can see we've got two desks, one bookshelf in the corner, a lot of art prints, and then as I pan over here, we have what I call my guitar corner. So I've got a bunch of posters, a set list, and then obviously my guitars. Over to the left of that, I just have a closet, which I don't really use for art supplies, so we're not going to go in there. Panning back toward the door, I have a couple of pieces of my own art. And then if we continue, we have um, a craft from one of my friends, Wild Country Crafts, and then a print from another one of my friends. Uh, I will link everyone down below who I am referencing so that you can go and check them out as well. And then over here, we have my primary bookshelves. And then we're back to the desk space. So that is just kind of the broad overview of my studio space. Going into a little bit more detail, the first place that I would like to reference is my art desk. This is where I do all of my art filming. I apologize for the noise, Elsa is running around. And this is where I keep my art supplies. So. In here, I just keep all of the quick access, like brushes, scissors, that sort of thing that I need readily available. I also have a chapstick, a hair tie, and these um, cloths that are meant for like lining drawers. I use them to open my paints sometimes. You'll see adorning my desk, I have a bunch of Blue October and other band stuff. So I always like to have a glass top to things so that I can display things underneath it. So here I just have three of my um, meet and greet race bracelets, poster, a ticket stub, ticket stub behind there, and then up here I've got a Sanctus Real set list, and down here I have my Need to Breathe set list, which you can't see because I have this artboard here. My dad helped me paint this so that I would have something that was non-reflective to film on because I didn't want to have the light, which you can see here, constantly reflecting on the glass and making it frustrating for the viewer. So this is where I do all of my filmed paintings and uh, it's been working pretty well. Over here I have just a holder for my iPad so that I can have my reference up while I am filming. And then again, I've got this light. This is the primary light that I use for filming. It works pretty well. If I turn it on here, you can see that it comes on and I have various brightness settings for it that I can use. And then I also have this uh, thing here that allows me to clamp my phone so that I can film uh, top down. And then finally here I have a candle and this is where I keep all of my quick access erasers and a pencil sharpener so that I have them. So that is my primary art desk. Let me pan back out for you so that you can see it. And that is really like the focal point of the office for me. This is where I do a lot of my creative work and I really love it. Switching now over to the other desk, we see that I have a almost empty desk here, which is fantastic. It is because I have a desk actually now in my dining room that I'm using for work because I'm working from home temporarily due to the pandemic. And so that desk has my monitor. This desk is where I will primarily do editing and stuff. So I got my laptop, a mouse and a mouse pad. That is just the cable for my laptop. And then that is where my monitor used to be. So that stand is where I used to have it. But right now, because it's on my work desk, I am just using it to hold this lamp. And I've got that film over the lamp so that it kind of diffuses the light a little better in case I want to use that lamp in conjunction with my other light for filming. So that's why that's there. And that is really all that's on this desk. Uh, in addition, underneath, again, this glass sheet, you can see that I just have some Switchfoot stuff here, 
And then I have this painting that I did like several years ago. And then these five paintings that I kind of made into a series that I also did several years ago. So this one is for Nothing But A Name by Miles Kennedy. This is for Graceful Dancing by Blue October. This is for 18th Floor Balcony by Blue October. This is for Bent to Fly by Slash featuring Miles Kennedy and the Conspirators. And then this is for Stars by Switchfoot. Okay, so I apologize if the lighting has changed. Uh, it got a little bit too dark to film, so I waited until the next day. But here, I just wanted to go into the details of my guitar corner here. And so as you can see, we have a signed Blue October poster, an unsigned Tremonti poster, a signed Miles Kennedy poster, and an unsigned Skillet set list. So these are just some of my musical um, possessions here, my memorabilia that I collect at multiple concerts that I go to, and I love it very much. If we then look down here, we have my two guitars. I have the Breedlove um, concert performance. Uh, it's, it's a pretty standard cheap student guitar. <laughs> Uh, it does have a solid wood top, which I really love, and I also have the purple Celia Capo, which was a gift that I love very much. And then I have my um, PRS Zach Myers SE guitar, which again is their student line, uh, which I just love the color of this guitar. I think that it is phenomenal, and that is why I really wanted one. And then here we have my bookshelf, which houses all of my books, my actual like book books. So up on the top shelf, you'll see um, all of the books. They are organized by author's last name. So we've got Pierce Brown, Lee Bardugo, uh, Blake Crouch, Cinda Williams Chima, and then on the bottom Cinda Williams Chima continues over there with the uh, the Wizard Air and the Warrior Air. And then Kristen Kishore, Sarah Dessen, etc, etc. Um, you can kind of see here, I'll give you just like a close-up view. Please ignore all the dust. I didn't dust it. I apologize. <laughs> so these are all of my like fictional books. Oh no, Draco is upside down. Hang on. There you go. <laughs> so yes, in addition to that, I've got all of my Funko Pops for Harry Potter. Severus Snape, of course. My happy uh, crafty penguin. And then some ribbon that I got on a present once and it was Slytherin color, so I kept it. <laughs> And then up here we've got Jack Skellington, uh, Chamonix, where I went to uh, when I visited Switzerland. Um, I have Jack Skellington again, but this time in a Mickey Mouse figurine. We have the Atomium in uh, Belgium, and then just a penguin popper that my friend gave me. Looking below that, we've got a couple of other miscellaneous books that didn't fit on the shelf above, so those right here. Um, and I plan on like adding to that shelf and eventually it'll extend over across the shelf. But for right now, this is just how it looks. And then I've got this really cool dragon that my sister gave me, a baby dragon that came with it. And then this other dragon statue that my dad gave me. And then he also gave me this dragonology book. So I thought that that was super cool. And then that remote there just uh, powers my crafty penguin. And then over to the right here, I just have a couple of larger books that wouldn't fit on any other shelf. The bottom two shelves here are just reference bookshelves. So I've got all of my reference books, uh, including martial arts, working out, weightlifting, German, scuba diving, snowboarding, <laughs> chess, anatomy, etc. So there you have all of my reference books. And then up here, I keep my uh, extra watercolor supplies. That actually holds uh, watercolor supplies that my dad gave me. And it also has some oil painting supplies as well. And then I keep all the cards that I receive from people in this wicker basket. And then I've got my art portfolio there, an extra frame, and a piece of ribbon that my friend gave me that I really liked. And then on the middle shelf here, I just have like miscellaneous art supplies. So I've got some fixative, my two porcelain palettes, my Sennelier wooden box that my paints came in, a couple of loose like uh, swatches and stuff, and then um, that little plastic pellet there is actually what I use for gouache sometimes too. And then I've got my Wacom tablet, my SSD card, and my remote for taking photos like away from my phone. 
below that is really where the magic kind of happens. I have all of my art supplies in this box here, with the exception of the ones that were on my desk. And then I also have all of my travel bags for art supplies. But below that, I have all of my art books and my sketchbooks. So over here, I have all of my art books. I'll give you a close up in a second. Some of these are finished sketchbooks, and then some of them are unfinished sketchbooks. Over here, I've got one more, no, a couple more sketchbooks actually. Uh, my new one, my Etcher sketchbook, my uh, more doodly type sketchbook, a couple of unused sketchbooks, and then a couple of larger reference books that wouldn't fit over there. In addition, I've got my microphone, and you might be wondering why I have hair uh, product on my bookshelf, but that's because I use it more for art than I do for my hair. Uh, that is what I use to seal in my graphite work. And then down below here, I just have kind of a mess, to be honest. I have got um, a bunch of random paper scraps that I always try to use for like swatches and stuff. I've got my art press board. I've got all of my watercolor paper. I have my larger art portfolio. I've got some paper towels. And then this is actually a Switchfoot um, concert poster that I need to get a frame for. And then over here, I just have canvas boards that I have never once used. So there you have that. <laughs> And then we get into my art box. So let me see if I can do this without making you too nauseated. Uh, I think this used to be a jewelry box, so that's why it looks like the way it does. Uh, it was a hand-me-down, so I have no idea where it's from or anything. But I've got in here just some smaller watercolor paper, some 4 by 6 stuff. Um, all of my washi tape that I like to use. My B watercolor paper is over there in the corner. And then I've just got some miscellaneous like inks and pencil sharpeners, and all of the rest of my masking tape and stuff, and masking fluid. In this drawer, I have all of my pencils. So I've got my color race colored pencils, and then my graphite pencils, my blending stumps, and some extra leads and stuff. Whoops. In here, I keep all of my Spectrum Noir markers and my glue gun. And then in here is all of my favorite watercolor brushes. So this is the drawer of watercolor brushes that I reach to the most often, with the exception of the ones on my desk. So the ones on my desk are my favorite. These are kind of my second tier, like if I need them, I'll grab them. And then over here, opposite that, I just have all of the rest of my brushes that I don't use nearly as much. Moving up from there, I have a lot more like crafting supplies. So I've got a couple of things of ribbon, some wire, my glue gun refills, a couple of pens, and then some charcoal that I don't really use. And then this houses all of my pens. So I've got my Faber Castell fine liners, uh, Tombow fine liners, my colored Faber Castell fine liners, and then other various like white and colored markers. Moving down from there, we have all of my watercolor palettes. So this is my Kurataki Gens, like Tambu watercolors, my Holbein watercolors, my gold watercolors from also from Kurataki Gens, like Tambi. My Sennelier palette, and then my Shin Han professional watercolor palette. Below that, I keep all of my watercolor pencils. So I've got my Faber Castell um, watercolor pencils, my regular Faber Castell colored pencil color pencils, uh, my Derwent watercolor pencils, an extra palette, some crafting paper, and then in the back there is just some long brushes that don't fit in this drawer up here. And then finally, the last drawer is where I keep all of my gouache. So I've got my Holbein gouache, the pamphlet that came with it. I have my Arteza gouache, and then I have the uh, box with the tubes from my Shin Han set. And then this is the last bookshelf in this office. I have a card from my boyfriend, my, uh, whoops, my guitar amp over there. Uh, that little heart-shaped bowl just holds all of my guitar picks. I have my Auto the Orange. I've got a bunch of CDs. I've got um, more CDs in there. And then I've got my candle supplies because I love having a candle. This also has guitar picks in it, guitar strings, guitar strap, the box that my Thalia Capo came in. 
below that I have some coasters and stuff, uh, my little art figurine thing, uh, a cut reed, my guitar notebook, some paints, some extra palette uh, things, and down there is just some um, paper clips, binder clips, etc. That has actually the tuners for my guitar because I switched the tuners to locking tuners, and then a couple of extra palettes, and my tripod lives down there. Moving now to the art above my desks. So the first piece that we see here is actually a present from my aunt and uncle. Um, I don't honestly know the artist's name, unfortunately. I still have not gotten it, so I don't know his name, but he um, presents his work at some of our local craft fairs. And so they saw this and obviously thought of me because I love penguins, and so they bought it for me. It is definitely one of my favorite pieces and I will cherish it forever. Below that, we have a print from Denise Soden or In Liquid Color. I bought one of her prints of these two amazing penguins. I love them so much. And it is on really, like really nice watercolor paper. Honestly, if you didn't know it was a print, you probably wouldn't be able to tell it was a print. Like it is that good. The only way you'd probably be able to tell is if you took it out of the frame and put water on it to see if the watercolor would start to dissolve. But we're not going to do that. <laughs> I do love this print just ever so much. And then below that, we have my Crafty Penguin logo. Uh, I do really like this guy. I painted him when I was trying to figure out my logo for my website. So that just lives there. Panning over to the right, we have this uh, imagination quote from Albert Einstein that I've just had forever, so I keep it there. Sorry, camera cut out there. So this is the um, old Shanghai, and then this would be obviously the new Shanghai. This is kind of what their skyline looks like from, um, I don't know what the waterway there is, but from the waterway, we actually went on a like boat and saw it at night all lit up and it was just absolutely phenomenal. And so I bought this from a street vendor there. I don't know his name, unfortunately, but you can see his seal over in the corner. And it was amazing watching him do them because he was so fast. He would do one of these paintings in like five minutes. It was phenomenal. So very much in love with this piece. And um, that's what it is. If I come over here to the right a little bit more, the top left piece is by the artist Tim Beck. Uh, this is a print of one of his paintings and I'd recently acquired it and I absolutely love it. I am so impressed with his work. I actually have another Tim Beck piece. This one is an original painting right here that I was lucky enough to buy uh, in time. He sells them on Instagram and if you're not super fast, then you won't get one. So finally once I was fast enough to get one. So that's what those are. This piece is one of my own originals. It's one of the only originals that I've done that I'm like super excited about and happy with. So I hung it up on the wall. <laughs> and then down here is again from my friend, um, one of his prints. I've got several other, other prints of his on my walls in other places, but those two live in here. And that concludes this studio tour. I hope that you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed filming it and kind of organizing my space in a way that is really conducive for making artwork. I really love it. And I think I really like having like that separation between doing artwork and doing work in my home. So I hope that you enjoyed it. Maybe it provided you a little bit of inspiration for your own art space. Um, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything you're curious about. If there's any links that you want me to provide to things, uh, I didn't really do any linking down below with the exception of the artists who created the pieces that I have on my walls. But um, if there's anything that you want me to link, I can certainly do that. If you just leave a comment, let me know what your what piece specifically you're interested in or, you know, piece of furniture, piece of artwork, anything that you're curious about. Um, with that said, though, please give this video a like if you liked it. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. I post new art and book related content every Tuesday and sometimes on Friday. Thank you guys so much. Catch you in the next one. Bye!